the TID DP 580 UHF DMR HT today on Ham Radio 2.0. Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason, KC5HWB, and this is Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews and how-tos of everything that's new in amateur radio. So if that's something that you get value from, please consider subscribing below and smashing that like button for me. Today is a new radio that was actually sent to me by TID, and they said, hey, if we send you this radio, uh, would you review it? And I'm, I'm like, sure, yeah, that's fine. I'm always happy to review new items. Uh, on YouTube, whether I'm the first one or, or not, it's a new item that I haven't reviewed yet. So this is a UHF DMR HT. It took me less than five minutes to shoot a code plug into it. It's got a standard um, two prong Kenwood style connector uh, on the side of it and programming cable that um, has a prolific chip in the head of it. Looks just like the TYT cable. I didn't try to see if a TYT cable would work with it. It very well could. Wouldn't surprise me. But um, take a look right here at the... This is the radio itself. You can see what the screen looks like. It's just a very basic monochrome screen. There's nothing... There's no color to it. Um, screen's kind of bright. There's no way to adjust the brightness on the on the screen either. I will say that uh, you can turn, you can change how long the backlight stays on in the menu here. Settings, backlight, and you can change it 15, 30 seconds off infinite. So I can turn it off. That way you can see it in the camera a little bit better. But there's no way to adjust the brightness on the backlight. So that was kind of disappointing. But, you know, for an inexpensive toned down HT. It's not bad. Uh, in the box, let me zoom back a little bit. Okay. In the box, you got a desk charger, which is good. Comes with the programming cable, obviously, which we already uh, looked at that. A uh, little strap and a belt clip. Came with, a, uh, came with an external speaker mic. That was kind of neat. TID radio on the top. Standard two-prong Kenwood style connector on the bottom. And it came with an extra Nagoya NA771 antenna, uh, which you can see right there in the yellow package. So it came with all that. I thought that was kind of neat. So it came with the standard antenna that, that, that's on the radio right now. So a second antenna, speaker mic, and that's what the box looks like on the front. So it does only go to 470. I know a lot of people uh, ask me that sometimes. They're like, well, if it's UHF, does it go to 480? I get that question a lot. Apparently, there's some commercial stuff up around, commercial or business stuff up around four, between 470 and 480. This one does not go to, to, to 480. It only goes to 470. So we'll take a look here at the programming software. And like I said, it took me less than five minutes, close, probably closer to three minutes to... Shoot, uh, shoot a very basic one or two channel code plug into this radio. Uh, general configuration here. I will say that when I got the radio, it was in Chinese. All the menus on the radio on the screen itself were in Chinese, and I can't read Chinese, so I couldn't figure out where to go. But if you plug it into the software, you can change the language to English and just shoot the blank code plug back into the radio. Read the radio, change it to English, and shoot that same code plug back into the radio, and it changed everything to English. So that was easy to do. No problems there. Um, let's see. DMR services basic. There's my uh subscriber ID, device ID, there's my contacts. It had the all call in it right there. I added the um worldwide metro and Texas statewide to it. Very simple. Um RX group digital monitor, added metro and Texas there, and then the channel I just added statewide to the zone and called it main. Uh just one zone that was already there. And there's my channel. Here's one thing that's cool about programming the channel. You can do it all across this line here. And you can pop, it pops out a window. And you can change the color code, um, the time slot. It has an RX and a TX color code. I thought that was strange. I hadn't seen that before. Not that I recall. I haven't seen that on another radio. Usually the color code is the color code. And it's the same on TX and receive, transmit and receive. 
this one was different. It'll let you change it. I could change this to four. So RX is four, but transmit is one. I guess that'd be cool if you wanted to do some simplex work with a buddy that, um, and you really wanted to hide from people. <laughs> I had trans, uh, you know, TX emit is color code. Contact is Texas. Like that. Close that. Go over here. Here's my dashboard. I just did a CUSA with somebody a minute ago. So, once again, I will key up. KC5HWB testing on Texas statewide. Just like that. You can see it came across. It has a 0.2% bit error rate. And currently, my hotspot is uh, set up for my Anytone radio. So, it's set up to be as close to zero as possible for my Anytone radio. So the fact that I've changed nothing on the hotspot and it's only getting a 0.2% bit error rate on this radio, that's pretty good. I thought that was uh, thought that was pretty good. So um, really simple, really easy to use, not much to it. Monochrome screen, two or three lines on three lines on the screen, plus some icons up, the, up at the top of the screen. Um, so I, I get the question a lot, what's the cheapest? Not the cheapest for the quality, or not the best quality for the lowest money, but the cheapest. That's the question that I get a lot in YouTube comments and emails and whatnot to me. What's the cheapest DMR radio that's out there? Well, look in the YouTube description below, and I'll send you a link to this radio. It's among the cheapest. Uh, it's probably not the cheapest you can find, but it is among the cheapest you can find. And um, it's a solid HT. Here's, a, here's my GD77 uh, Radioddity. It's about the same size as that, and but it's much more solid. It's got a much more sturdy feel to it. It's got an 1800 milliamp hour battery on the on the back of it, and um, it's a solid choice. If if you run across one of these and you have questions about it, pick it up. It's easy to program, and I think you'll be happy with it. So, once again, thanks for watching. Um, this is Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews and how-tos of everything that's new on amateur radio. If that's something that interests you and you want to see more reviews, click on subscribe below, smash the like button for me, and we'll see you next time.